begin our review of environmental chemistry, we will first draw a mountain, a river, and a lake. The next thing we will draw is the sun and the stratospheric ozone layer. The first environmental issue we will look at is acid deposition. Acid deposition is produced when NOx and SOx emissions mix with water vapor in the air. If you remember from your notes, sulfur oxides come from the combustion of fossil fuels, such as burning coal. The combustion of coal not only produces sulfur oxides, but as well as carbon dioxide gas, particulates, as well as heat. Because these emissions contribute to wet and dry deposition, we can reduce them by burning low sulfur coal or installing scrubbers as well as electrostatic precipitators. To remember that scrubbers reduce the amount of sulfur released, remember they both start with S. Electrostatic precipitators will reduce the amount of particulates released. The sulfur that is removed by scrubbers can be collected and later on used for other industrial processes. We will now move to the production of nitrous oxides. Nitrous oxides, or NOx, are produced in high temperature internal combustion engines such as those in our car or in our furnaces. Another product of combustion of fuels in our cars is carbon dioxide. Nitrous oxide emissions can be reduced by installing catalytic converters in our cars. One way to remember that catalytic converters are found in cars is that they both start with C. Another thing we can add to our picture is a gas station. Gasoline contains benzene rings and benzene rings are considered persistent organic pollutants and are very stable and hard to break down. Now that we have looked at the sources of nitrogen and sulfur oxides, we will now look at the effects of acid deposition. One of the major effects of acid deposition is that it can cause the leaching of heavy metals. Another effect of SOx and NOx emissions in the air is that it can lead to asthma and bronchitis. While these two are not the only effects of acid deposition, these two are normally harder for students to remember, so make sure you study them. We can now add leaching of heavy metals to our picture. Heavy metals that can be leached into the water include lead, mercury, copper, and iron. Where do these heavy metals come from? Remember, they come from the disposal of paint cans, batteries, as well as out of rocks naturally by themselves. Heavy metals can be dangerous because they can affect the nervous system of aquatic organisms. Another environmental issue in the chemistry unit is photochemical smog. Smog stands for a mixture of smoke and fog. But what really is in photochemical smog is nitrogen oxides from our cars, hydrogen sulfide gas, as well as tropospheric or ground level ozone. Unlike stratospheric ozone, tropospheric ozone or low-level ozone does not protect us from UV radiation. However, there has been an increase in UV radiation reaching Earth's surface due to ozone thinning. The thinning of the ozone layer is due to the increased use of CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons. CFCs are used in the production of air conditioners, refrigerants in our refrigerators, as well as aerosol containers. The breakdown of the ozone layer has increased incidences of skin cancer. Another environmental issue that we talked about in class are algal blooms and an increase in biological oxygen demand. Bacteria and water will break down dead organic matter, which increases the use of oxygen. A high amount of oxygen means that there's high amounts of organic waste in the water. The further downstream you are from a sewage disposal site, the higher the biological oxygen demand. Another environmental issue we studied in class is biomagnification or bioaccumulation. Biomagnification means that if we take a look at our food chain, the animals that are at the top of the food chain will have accumulated the most amount of toxins in their fat. Substances that biomagnify in the food chain include heavy metals, 
dioxins and fumes, and pesticides such as DDT. Dioxins and furans can enter into our water system when they are used in the bleaching of pulp and paper. Pesticides, which are used in agricultural practices, can be dangerous if biomagnified because they contain benzene rings as well as chlorine atoms, both which are hard to break down. Fertilizers, which are also used on plants, contain nitrates and phosphates. If fertilizers end up in our water system, they will increase the amount of bacterial growth, therefore also increasing biological oxygen demand. Our picture is looking really full, but we will add one more environmental issue which we will look at in the energy unit, and that is global warming. Global warming is due to two gases, and those are carbon dioxide as well as methane gas. While there are other gases that lead to global warming, Carbon dioxide from the combustion of fossil fuels is the main contributor. Your teachers know that this is a lot of information, but this is a great summary picture that you can take out while you're studying. 